Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Fix This House. On today's episode, I'm going to be showing you how I'm changing out my old recessed canned lightings in my kitchen into these ultra thin LED pot lights. So stay tuned. So friends, if you're new to the channel, please consider pressing that like, subscribe, and notification bell so you can always be in tune of DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do in this channel. So friends, I already made a complete video on how to fully wire this up in your attic, the whole template, and the full install of these pot lights if it, you're installing these for the first time on a blank ceiling. Um, so if you're interested on that video, I'll leave that link up here on the top. Just click on that and it'll show you step by step. It's about a 20 minute video and it'll show you the complete wiring of these pot lights. So in this video, I'm just going to be showing you how to replace your old can lightings with these ones. So I'm not going to be going in detail on the full wiring on your attic. So click on that video if you're interested. So the product that I'll be using today is the Insignore Ultra Thin LED 6 inch pot lights. Now these are recessed lighting. They come in two sizes, which is the six inch, which I have right now and a four inch as well. In this case, I'm using the six inch because I already bought the 12 pack. Um, six of them I already used in my living room. If you watch that uh, video that I told you, that's where I used it. But um, this one, I'm just only going to be using two of them. I highly suggest that you buy them in bulk, which will save you a lot more money rather than buying them here little by little here or there. Every tool, every uh, product that I use on this video, I'll leave it in the description down below. So I'll make it easier for you to find this product and all the tools that I use throughout this whole video. Now these are 5K, which means that um, the brightness is about daylight color. Now they come in various colors as well. It's totally up to you whether you want it into a yellowish tint to a white, wider tint, just like this one, which is 5K. So this is what I chose. These are actually also energy saver and they're 1050 lumens, which is pretty bright. So one of these can pretty much light up a whole room just by itself alone. In this case, I'm gonna be using two of them in this sink area of my kitchen. Now it also comes with 12 pod lights and 12 of these J boxes. Now these J box connector already have all the necessary wiring and connectors that you need. It comes with the ground, the hot black and the neutral white to just do a plug and play from your main power, your existing main power on your can lighting if you have them and to direct connection to the pod light itself. Now these have our very special clips on them. I highly suggest that you always find these um, pod lights with the very strong clips because these will determine whether these pod lights will sit flush on your ceiling, nice and flush, or if you have weak springs on these, they will droop down and sag and you don't want that aesthetically. And I'll show you a reason, uh, I'll show you an example on that and what I have now and how much it droops down. Okay, friends. So if you have any questions, just leave it on the description down below. With that being said, let's get installing. Here's a good example of how one of the can lightings that I have on my kitchen sits. As you can tell, it is drooping down because these have very weak um, clips on them. Um, that's why over time it sags like this. Now I already have this side taking out right here. That was the side I was showing you earlier. See how it droops down. You can see it from far away that there is a huge gap on there all around, especially on the right side. And this is what it looks like underneath. And there you have it. You have the can inside. And that's what we're going to end up removing today. And these are the clips that I was telling you that are ultra weak. That's why they don't clip really well on the can, the, the can itself. That's why it droops down. This is actually a replacement one that I just screwed into the light bulb socket. I already measured the size of this pod light from the back. Again, you're not going to measure here. This is not where you measure. You actually measure from where it sits at the back. Now from end to end is a good point from the end of this edge where the spring is to the other edge of the spring. I, you will have to measure and that's about uh, what I'm seeing. What I'm measuring here is about six inches. You want the hole to be smaller than the pot light itself because the whole pot light is about six and three quarters. Six and fourteenth is way smaller so that will sit perfectly right here. It's big enough um, so that 
these clips will sit right flush on here okay friends you don't want to get it too big because if you get it too big this thing will just um you'll have holes and gaps around the pod light itself all right so measuring this hole so this hole right here that we have is five and three quarters so what we need is six and a quarter so that's uh we're gonna have to relieve a little bit more so what we're gonna do now is first we're gonna take off this light right here take off the pot light at the top now one of the tools that i love using to check electricity is my craftsman voltage detector i'll leave the link the of this product down below if you're interested on this product but it's an easy way to check for voltage um, whenever it detects voltage it will turn red as you can see right here there is no volts because the power switch is turned off, but never risk that. So you always want to turn off for the main power, but let's see how it reacts when the light is on. So when there is power connected to here, right there, it does blink. But the very first thing that we need to do is disconnect the power or actually turn off the power from the main breaker. Warning friends, before you do anything electrical. I'm not a licensed electrician. Uh, if you're not comfortable working with electrical at all, please make sure that you contact your licensed uh, electrician to do this job for you. So go to your circuit breaker and turn off the main power. So what I did here is I just disconnected the main source from the rail got one down now the electrical connection is inside this box in here so what you're gonna do is just gonna pull that off pop that little latch right there and it should open right up and you should be and you should gain access to all the wiring which is right there now again take just take all the connections off. Slide it right off. Just like that. A tip is actually make sure that you wear gloves when you're always near your uh, ceiling. Make sure you wear these because if you have a flat paint on your ceiling and you have oils on your hands or any type of um, uh, stain, uh, you want to prevent that from touching your your ceiling up there because once you touch that with the flat paint you're gonna have a lot of smudges and you don't want that so now that we know that the difference on the whole size is half an inch you're just gonna go a quarter inch on each side of the hole so I'm just gonna take a quarter inch measure on one side take another quarter inch and measure it on the other side and then you're going to do that also on the other side. I know a hole doesn't have sides, but you kind of get the picture. So here's what I mean. So this is about a quarter inch on that side, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch. Use a hole saw right here, a hand tool hole saw and start relieving this area right here. should measure six and a quarter perfect that's the old one there's our new lighting and it is a lot brighter 
and I like the 5k on it. Now let's change out that one and make it even. What do you guys think? Leave in the comment section below what you think. 